So, you know how you're not floating into the depths of empty space? Well, that's where the three great continents come in. You are... You are literally standing on them. As the name suggests, there are three major known continents. Aldenard, Ilsebard, and Othard, all perched on the planet known as Hydaelyn. Why does it have the same name as that crystal glowy pain in the butt who keeps making you deal with her weird ex-boyfriend and his emo band? Because she is the planet, the planet is her, and yet yeah, you, 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 you get the idea. It's confusing enough without getting into the messy details. The first continent is the one we're all most familiar with, Aldenard. Chances are, if you've ever started the game, you've been standing on it for a while. Aldenard is home to the now six city-states. It'll share Ishgard, Verdania, Alamiga, Ulda, and Limsa Lamensa, and is where the bulk of the game takes place. It is home to a very wide variety of biomes, creatures, and resources, and is thought out of the three great continents to be the most abundant among them. As you can see, it is surrounded on the north, south, and western sides by some several oceans, the northern being the Bloodbrine Sea, the west, which is called the Indigo Deep, and the south, known as the Sea of Ash. There is uh, also a relatively small body of water to the east of Alamigo, known as the Sea of Jade, which, as of this video and Stormblood, has not been explored. Aldenard is also where the bulk of the races, the Hira, Lalafell, Makote, Elizan, Beastmen, and Dragons originated from, and their cultures and histories are as diverse as they themselves. The land itself is considered the most abundant of the three, with characters throughout the main story quest, especially those from other nations, commenting on the etheric density of the land and its many, many resources. That being said, it is also the least technologically advanced of the three great continents, still worshipping what other nations would consider to be primitive gods and dealing with issues in a severely immodern fashion. It's quite clear that most of the population of Aldenard is not very well educated, given how few actual places of study there are, and it is reflected in the way most foreign entities, particularly Charlans, interact with them. The history of Aldenard is incredibly vast, and it is thankfully the most documented that we have thus far spanning across an unknown period of time with at least seven ages somewhat preserved through the lore book and endgame text. It is widely believed that the Agena Empire first began here in the Third Astral Era, thought to begin about 5,000 years ago, and was the most technologically advanced of its or any other time. It also housed the three main branches of magic in the forms of the three sides of the War of the Magi. The School of Black Magic in the form of Mach, the School of White Magic in the Emdapori, and the School of Arcana, uh, basically summons and unaspected magic, in the Nimians. After the War of the Magi's end, these three nations broke up into Belladea, known for building the temples in the damn desert that you hate playing through, Gamora, who also built dungeons that made you wish you could strangle whoever made them, the early Alamegans, made up of white and black mages from Amdapur and Mach, who put aside their differences just long enough not to drown, and the Charlians, who were essentially castaway Nimians who straight up abandoned Vilbrand in favor of making friends with the northern sea wolves. Belladea eventually became Ulda and its sister nation Sildi. Gilmora eventually became Gridania when the Entel Elementals stopped throwing a tantrum. Alamigo finally got its shit together before losing its shit almost immediately thanks to crazy kings and greedy generals, and eventually someone crashed into Vilbrand again, forming Limsa Lamenza to the south. There, of course, was also Ishgard, but so much conflicting information is had about the Elizans and where the heck they all were while the War of the Magic stuff was going on, so it's widely believed that they were just up in the churning mist chilling while all this destruction was going about. Next, we have the continent of Authard, home to Doma, the Ruby Sea, the Azim Steppe, and pretty much the best music in the game. While our present map covers about a third of its landmass presently, we can get a pretty good idea of what it's like just by looking at it from this perspective. As the expansion has only just come out for Stormblood and Authard along with it, we don't actually have that much information on Doma or the 
nearby, definitely not island of Japan, Koshu. There's definitely some history here in the culturally rich lands of Arthur, but unfortunately, there's just not much to look at from a lore perspective here at patch 4.05. Additionally, I have to add that these translations are a bit wonky and could be off by a few letters given how absolute insanity the font for the map actually is. These are uh, educated guesses, however. We can get a pretty good look at the land masses as a whole by taking a view of the overworld map. As you can see, to the south, covered by clouds, is an area known as Drelix Bend, an area none too far off the eastern island nation of Thanavir, an island mostly known for its slutty dress glamour and less for its alchemic geniuses for some reason. To the north of that, we can see a mountain range encompassing the bulk of the desert called the Bourne or the Burn. Again, translation could be off since there. <laughs> doesn't exactly look like an O. More like a U, actually. I, but I, I, I digress. As you can see, it is a large white sand desert, similar to the ones that we can see just on the edge of the Azim Steppe here, and is largely craterous and populated by sand wardens, supposedly. To the north of that is the Knowing Sea, which is more akin to a Knowing Bay, but whatever. Moving back into the in-game areas, we have the Azim Step, which is connected to the Bay of Yangtze and to Doma through a group of mountains called the Fangod Crescent. South of this, near the Bourne or Burn, we can see a small patch of land called Nangsia. It might be a sister name of Shin to Doma or simply its own thing, who knows. To the east of that, we have our Ruby Tide, and of course, the land of Koshu that houses our beloved Kagane, and the bloodbath that is to become Shirogane, and a city yet unvisited called Bioko. Looking north of the Azim Steppe, however, we can see yet another unvisited area an icy mountainous region framed by the tall Tail Mountains, probably named by the local Alrod tribes, called the Calvin Grath. North of this, we have the Blind Frost, which we can assume is one cold-ass ocean, and a yet nameless island between them that I, for the life of me, could not translate even a little bit. Last, and certainly the spot of the least information, is Ilsebard, a continent situated right between the middle of the two, 99.9% .9 covered in clouds and ominous figures that makes lore whores like me both excited and anxious. Ilsebard is home to the Gurleyan Empire, and that is pretty much all we know about it. Apparently, it has such vicious weather cycles and nearly uninhabitable landscape that it is an absolute wonder that anybody built an empire here at all, let alone one that would eventually conquer most of the known world. It is largely implied that the Algan Empire left some manner of technological wonder that the Gurleyans figured out, which caused their whole population to thrust forward in technological powers and thus become such a driving force in the world. But the specifics of that are largely unknown. Evidently, the land is viciously cold, with unforgiving storms in the summer times and icy, bitter winters, which, before the Magitek Revolution and rise of the Empire, would cause whole villages to burn their resources with nothing. Just to survive. Why in the name of the Twelve would anybody live in these godforsaken expanses? It is thought by lore speculators that the early Garleans were magicless people driven out by of Aldenard by what would later become the Alamegans. Since they could not fight back against superpowered weirdos, their next best bet was to try and tough it out in Ilsebard, which, when you think about what happened to Alamigo, kind of makes it poetic. Uh, aside from the three known continents, there are some several areas not pictured on the map. I can guesstimate the exact positions of these particular areas and what they look like, but ultimately, all I can do is make an informed shrug at the rest of this video, so here we go! Mercidia. You've likely heard of this particular menmas through playing through the Heavensward storyline. This is the original homeland of the dragons and supposedly the Makote tribes, though that last bit is still up in the air for now. It is one, was once a beautiful country, worshipping its own gods, home to vast cities and booming populations. It was ultimately laid to waste by a war that ate up the bulk of the Allegan Empire's time and energy. 
It was because of this conquest of Mericidia that the Allians began turning to Magitek in order to stop throwing bodies at what was basically a defensive brick wall. And it was that switch to more powerful, more intelligent machines like Ultima Weapon, Omega, and so forth that Mericidia ultimately lost. Their four most powerful weapons, the four gods they summoned forth to try and fight the Allegans, Bahamut, Sephiroth, Sophia, and Zervan, were ultimately captured and defeated. But it was believed when Mericidia refused still to yield to the Allegan Empire, their entire country was bombarded and laid to waste. According to what few sources we have on the matter, primarily the lore book, the bulk of the land is still vastly uninhabitable, but what few people remain there are extremely hostile, going as far as to attack anything that comes even remotely close to them for the time being. Because of that, there isn't even so much as an inkling of what the area looks like. To the very far north of Aldenard lies the Northern Empty, home to the city-state of Charlin, aka the greedy book nerds who like to think they're so cool by keeping all the badass spells and stuff to themselves, and the original home of the Sea Wolf Rogadin, Aesalent, roughly translating to First Land. It is thought, based on designs from Charlie and Clockwork and defenses and obvious parallels between real life and game, that the sea wolves are almost Viking-like in nature, sailing around and plundering whatever they could find. It is assumed, based on that, that the northern empty and subsequent land masses are as cold as Shiva's nipples in the middle of December during a diamond dust, because everybody stays in so much it is probably no wonder that everybody there is so damn intelligent. Finally, we come to the New World, and much like the way nobody before the Spanish knew anything about their New World, we know very little about the New World in the game. As far as we can tell, it is to the far west of our current map some several moons, or months, worth of sailing away, and is home to the Mamuja, you know, those assholes that keep stirring shit up in Upper Lenotia. Other than that, we know little more about it other than a whole bunch of veggies and fruits were brought over to be cultivated from there. Kinda leaves you hanging there for a bit, but I have a feeling we're gonna be there soon enough. Hopefully sooner than we think. But that's all I have for you guys for now. I'm sorry that this episode was mostly maps and took forever. I had a lot of stuff going on in real life. But I hope you guys find this helpful. So... When I see you, I'll be covering more of the Magi and what we know about it next time.